once upon a time, we had a beautiful planet called the Earth. This is how the Earth looked like before 1957. If you were wondering, why is it 1957? It was the first year where we humankind came up with our first artificial satellite which called Sputnik 1 and we placed it at the outer space. Ever since then, we have been continuously participating in the space race. Space technology have benefited ourselves and reshaped the quality of our life. 50 years ago, if my grandparents were to head to Kuala Lumpur, they will be riding in a bike and stop at few places to ask for the location. But today, I drove all myself over here to MMU. I even had time to grab my afternoon coffee on the way by just having a cashless payment. Waze and cashless payment are space technologies. Can we see how easier our life has become? It makes us to live in a comfort zone. It saves our time. Also, it saves the entire hassle of us lining up. Ladies and gentlemen, now let's look into the possibilities of the satellite itself. How are they working? Where are they? Do we have any idea about it? The technology has been shaping us and it leads us to a comfortable life. That's what we are here for too. So every day we will be working towards enhancing it to a better level, better level, and even better level. But let me bring you to the behind the scenes of the life cycle of a satellite would be facing. We put up a satellite in outer space today. After sometimes several years, it runs out of fuel. When? Then we put it up another satellite. It runs out of fuel again. Then we put up another satellite up there. We don't bring it back. When it runs out of fuel, we put another satellite. And the cycle continues. Fast forward. This is how the Earth looks like today. All of these white particles, white dots, are known as space dust, space garbage, or NASA calls it as space debris. According to them, there are more than 3,200 dead satellites in the size of a school bus. That's so big. And there are even more 25 thousands of pieces of space debris in the size of 10 centimeters and above and anything less than that there are millions of pieces of them all of them are a part of that we have forgotten to clean up during our space exploration we tend to have this common understanding perception or myth that follows us. Space is so big. Space is so huge. And even more, in certain extents whereby this space debris, they would collide with each other. Space accidents do happen, just like how our road accidents happen.
What about it now? Is it safe for us? We want a better tomorrow for all of us. A tomorrow that is well equipped and well fostered with the technological development. This has been the world's problem. So now, let's look into where we are today, Malaysia. Malaysia, 20 years ago, we had a huge gap in the space race. However, today, we have been developing or constructing our own Earth Station, space technologies, which has the capacity to assemble our own small satellites. Malaysia is actively being a part of micro satellite and below. We have lots of advantage over there. They come in smaller size and they also come in lesser weight. This cute little piece over here, this is a one-to-one -one model of a nano satellite. This is a real satellite that it could work just like the other traditional conventional satellites that we know. It works just like the same. And it is very unique because it comes in small size. Therefore, it could work in a group of them to be deployed at the same time or at different times to a group or a map of an area and they could perform their tasks on their own. This picture, would that seem familiar? A mega constellation. We would have heard about Starlink, OneWeb, yeah, they are mega constellations. Constellations do work with smaller class of satellites because of two big advantages that we have. The first one would be the lower cost of manufacturing for smaller class of satellite. If anyone would have a guess how much would this piece cost? It cost only 0.0005% of an ordinary conventional satellite. And on the other hand, it has lower barriers to enter into the space as well. This gives it as a perfect platform for developing nations in space industry like Malaysia, Uganda and Cuba to continuously explore in the small class satellite industry. However, these small satellites, they are hazardous as well. They are highly hazardous. If you were to ask me, how could such a tiny piece would be hazardous? Now, I want all of you to imagine a bullet, a tiny metal piece. When it's stationary, it's perfectly fine. But once it's loaded into a gun and fired, boom, the power and the velocity, it is catastrophic. This is what happens with the smaller class satellite as well when they are in outer space and moving at very high speed of 27,000 km per hour. That's the speed of it. At that speed, my dear ladies and gentlemen, a flag of paint would be the bullet. It would damage a billion dollar satellite just in a split of second. That's the power of space debris that we have today. It has been highly debatable. And what can we do about it next? There have been lots of myths that has been underlying and pinning the truth behind it. The myth number one. Some might say that, oh, space is very big. This satellite is very small. It could make no much difference or no much I impact on the existing space that it would take. The truth is, 
all of the existing shared data on the tracking system from NASA, ESA, and name of the private space companies as well, we can only track on space orbits or space things which is up to a size of a cell phone. This is smaller than a size of a cell phone. So we can't track them. Not being able to track them, which simply means it's going to be unpredictable. And unpredictable objects move at such high speed. It is definitely cassitropic. So myth number two, everything that we put up on this space, it gets burnt out when it re-enters into the atmosphere. Yep, science says so. But the truth is, the orbital decay of a CubeSat or a smaller class of satellite, it highly depends on the simulation studies as well, on the orbital drag. The best case scenario, it shows that it could re-enter the atmosphere within the first three years of end of its life. But the worst case scenario, it says that it takes up to 122 years for a junk to re-enter into the atmosphere and to get burnt up. That's such a long year with having mega constellations like this. The small satellite industry has been growing rapidly ever since the beginning of 1990s. There have been only about less than a few pieces of small satellites which has been launched back in 1990s. In 2021, it has been thousands of them exponential growth would make the numbers to burst up to 50,000 or even 70,000 in 2030. Remember, it's exponential. When all of these things goes up and it crowds up the entire outer space and we are here dealing with the buzzwords of Vision 2030, Vision 2050, it is going to be a bigger challenge for us to address it. When we, Malaysia, the country which has been growing in this industry, let's do it right at the time that we are growing. Let's spend a few more resources into the right channels so that we have everything at least works on the deorbital part of the small satellite so that it could come back at the end of the life even earlier than before. Reduce the mess that we have at the top of the outer space. Oftentimes, I tend to get this reply saying that we had that instant disconnection when we talk about space or outer space because it's very far, it's very big, I can't see them, I'm not an aerospace engineer, I could not contribute, oh it's not my forte, why should I even care about it? Ladies and gentlemen, we are living with it. Even the show is being live streamed and that would be the power of internet and that's what we are experiencing it today and even 10, 50, 100 years from now we have so many things coming towards us but with the number of debris that we have today it is definitely a point to address and it needs attention On the whole point of the idea, it is time for us to work towards deorbiting of the smaller satellites or works on the awareness of it. It is time for us transforming the tomorrow 
for a better future for you and I, for ourselves, for our family, and also for the community, for the nation that we are. We can definitely do it. With that, thank you.